So we've got two main bearings that we need to keep lubricated in a CVH chiller. We have your journal bearing up here in the front. This is your physical uh, bearing here. That oil is going to come into this inlet port, feed in through your journal bearing, come out the bottom of the drain, and then back out to your oil reservoir. On your thrust bearing, you'll come into the back of the motor here, drain down into your bearing assembly, and then back out the drain, which will then return to your oil sump. It'll actually go through an oil separator on the newer machines and then to the sump after that. But let's back up here and look at the larger cycle as a whole and as we get into that i'm trying to move quickly here i'm holding schamberger with chiller academy and hvac time today let's talk about an oil cycle for a cvh chiller and if you'd like any additional training feel free to check out chilleracademy.com got all kinds of stuff over there introduction and chiller course you should really think about it anyway let's get into our oil cycle so everything starts here at the oil tank. This is your main reservoir will, that will hold your oil. It has an oil heater in it that will make sure we maintain oil temperature. And then we have our oil pump in here. This oil pump will pull oil from the reservoir and push it into our filter and regulator block. This filter regulator block has a canister style filter, very similar to your car, in addition to the physical regulator, which is adjustable here at the block. So this regulator will be adjusted to 18 to PSI D deferential between the pump's discharge pressure and the sump pressure. So we're gonna leave our filter block and we're gonna come up through our economizer for our oil cooler. Our oil cooler is contained inside the economizer and the piping will be on the back side of this. So if you ever do need to open this system up and service it, drop the economizer for any reason, make sure that you take into account needing to disconnect your oil lines. As we leave the oil cooler, we will go up and feed into our bearing assemblies. As we discussed earlier, you have your uh, journal bearing assembly up here and then your thrust bearing assembly back here. These thrust bearings are a ball bearing style and this journal bearing is essentially, think of it as like a sleeve bearing, but it actually has oil injection ports that we use the oil as our rotating surface. So with a regular sleeve, we're not gonna actually be injecting oil. It is just a permanently lubricated bearing surface where with an actual journal bearing, we're actually injecting oil into the bearing assembly in order to create a rotating surface. The oil itself acts as that. And we drain down out of those bearings and our journal bearing has a drain port on the very front here, which comes into our oil separator. Our thrust bearings have a drain port on the back of the cap which will come into this same oil separator as well. A lot of things are happening in this oil separator, but any additional refrigerant that gets collected in the oil has a chance to be separated out and returned back to the evaporator. In addition to it is our vent line passing from our oil tank coming up through and allowing our vapor that gets caught into the oil tank, including the vapor that gets injected from the adductor system to come from the oil tank and flow back up through into the evaporator in order to prevent vapor refrigerant from stacking into the oil tank assembly. So as the refrigerant oil separate in our separator, it drains out a bottom port and returns to our oil tank housing. And that is the only function that the oil is trying to do in this system. It is flowing through the cooler, going up to our two bearings, draining back down through our separator and then coming back to our tank. There are other things happening at the oil tank, such as a refrigerant pump for our motor cooling circuit, separate video on that for as a secondary refrigeration cycle. So there is a secondary and primary refrigeration cycle videos for this particular chiller, primary being the main uh, flow through the compressor and through our economizer and in our two heat exchangers. And then the secondaries being our motor cooling, our purge and our inductor. Now I'll cover the adductor quickly here as well. So the adductor system is, is essentially another term for it that's, that's also common is known as a jet pump. Essentially, we need to make sure that we're getting our oil back that gets trapped into the system. Oil that gets trapped in our evaporator and oil that gets caught in our suction nose cone need to be able to return back to our oil sump. Otherwise, it will create other heat exchange issues. So we have one line coming off the nose cone that drains back into our eductor block here, and another line that comes off of the bottom of the evaporator, goes through a filter dryer, and then into our eductor block. Then we will have a high pressure condenser gas line that flows from the condenser into this block. That high conden pressure condenser gas flows through a nozzle assembly, which creates a venturi effect, which is basically just a siphoning and that siphoning draws that refrigerant uh, saturated oil off of the, or technically oil saturated refrigerant, off of 
these two points and it dumps that into our oil tank and that's how we're able to get that oil back now all of that vapor refrigerant that ends up landing in here needs somewhere to go so that's where our vapor vent line comes into effect and allowing that to draw back over into the evaporator now there was a time where this separator was not used and on those systems essentially our main drains would just come straight back to our tank and our vent line just went straight to the evaporator everything did not pass through our separator like it does on the newer versions so if you do come across one that you don't see this separator it's okay essentially it's just a much simplified version of this circuit where the oil return lines go straight back to the tank the vent line is going to go straight to the evaporator and that's all that you're gonna have to worry about there's nothing else going on there and that is your oil cycle for a cvh now it doesn't matter if it's a cvh e cvh g cvh f cdh they're all using the same basic cycle with the same layout and components i hope this is helpful to you if you'd like some additional training on any of this chiller stuff and you'd like to improve yourself or just get into chillers as a chiller technician to begin with go to chilleracademy.com it is a site, a training platform tailor-made by myself for you, the chiller technician who wants to improve and get a professional education in this industry and continue to grow your skills. This is an amazing side of the industry to be in and be a part of. I'd love to see you over in the academy. With that, MTT, make the time for your family, for your spouse, for your kids. I'll see you over there.